Hello, welcome back. As part of the series, a Databricks Certified Associate Developer Spark, so we are bringing up the next video where we will be explaining the data frame uh, nature or the data, uh, data frame uh, immutability is one of the nature of data frame. So if you have worked in other programming languages, you might have already known or heard about immu what, uh, immutability word like Java or some other programming languages. But uh, definitely we will understand why we are calling data frame spark data frame as a immutable data frame and what is the concept behind this. Uh, we will learn both theoretically and practically. So before uh, our proceeding, if you are new to this channel, we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notifications. So let's get started. So I would recommend you to please pause this video here uh, for a minute and uh, please read through this. So it's very important to uh, follow this instruction to get maximum out of this course. Okay, let's proceed. And uh, as you can see, the course content uh, will be explaining why data frame is immutable. So that's the main course content today, right? And uh, why data frame is immutable, right? Why means uh, the what is immutable is immutability is nothing but it's uh, unchangeable, right? So anything which is immutable, whatever we call it is immutable. The dictionary meaning of immutable is unchangeable. That means you cannot change it. If there is anything, uh, any object, any uh, particular thing, you cannot change it by time, right? So that's the dictionary meaning, and the same uh, meaning applies here. If a Spark data frame is created, once it is created, you cannot change it, right? You can delete it or whatever, right? But you cannot change it. So by nature, so a data frame, Spark data frame, is unchangeable. And let us understand how and why, right? So to change, you need a transformation. Suppose, as you say, you uh, we are saying data frame is immutable that is you cannot change it right so then you might ask without changing how do I perform the transformations yeah definitely you need to apply the transformations you need to apply actions uh, spark uh, data frame actions to kind of a uh, transform the data and write it into, the, into a subsequent data frame so that's how you change it so that's the only way to change it otherwise you cannot uh, touch the existing data frame or touch the existing uh, data frame like apply the transformation and Right, uh, change it and write it to different data frame. Change means on the fly change will happen. You cannot change the existing data frame. That's clear, right? And uh, so syntactically, this is how it looks like whenever you read a data frame, uh, when you, uh, you read a file to a data frame, right? Spark.read.format and you can read any kind of file, file format here, dot schema. So you provide explicit schema here and dot load is where you give the path of the file and uh, then you will uh, load into a variable which which will become subsequently become the data frame so uh, it is returned to a data frame variable so what happens uh, behind the scene right so exactly this particular uh, uh, sales data frame will be logically returned uh, to a so, so sorry physically returned to a location in the disk right so it is having a location particular location in the disk whenever this data frame is created so now if i write after that along with this if i write dot with column renamed right so country i want to re rename to location so here it is not changing the existing data frame here right what it does is it will so when it is reading itself the reading is one step right but after reading or after loading to the memory so whenever you do dot with column any operation that you are performing right it may be rename it may be drop it may be um, any arithmetic operation that you are performing any particular step each and every step is creating a new data frame here right suppose if i uh, create uh, if i drop a particular column right so it will again create one more uh, data frame as you can see the, this is a base data frame and where the full data as it is whatever you, there is a csv file right the entire csv file data and all the columns present here will be in the in this data frame and in this data frame uh, you are renaming the column right from country to location and after that uh, the final uh, if you are performing say i perform dot uh, drop column right and particular to column you are dropping so that column is dropped so here this particular data frame the second data frame is derived from the first data frame and the third data frame is uh, derived from the 
second this second data frame so that's how this is uh, the data frame is immutable here that means each layer of the data frame it's actually uh, getting cloned right with a modified version of them right but it is not getting changed the existing data frames are not getting frame, uh, changed so that's the beauty of it and why why data frame is immutable that's the whole reason so we will come to know that in the next slide right it's because uh, data frame needs to maintain the lineage of the graph lineage it, it will create a lineage graph so why it will create a lineage graph support say for example there is a uh, example there is when you are performing operation there might be any uh, cluster issue or any kind of a uh, memory issue whatever happens any any failure happen, happens right so the lineage will be maintained lineage is what so lineage is a connection so lineage is like your forefather and father and you you right so there is a lineage from your it's a heredity right so it's like so you have drawn you are drawn you are being drawn from your father and your father is drawn from the grandfather and then great grandfather right so there is a lineage similarly so the, the spark also keep the lineage right so what is that lineage what we are talking about so let's take an example right suppose there is a data frame here base data frame and you rename a particular column and write it to a second data frame here and again you add one new column right so as you are doing here right so first step is rename second is again you are adding some column and then dropping something and then filtering so in each step whatever you are performing so for each step there is a data frame is getting created so that's the first step right and uh, this is what we are calling it as a as you say it is a immutable and also it is a distributed immutable distributed immutable and distributed data type data frame is a immutable distributed data type and now not only this so not only the immutability but also it is having a lineage lineage means what so from this there is a connection right from here to here there is a connection here to here there is a connection here to here there is a connection so it cannot be like a, so at any given point right you can retrieve the data frame to at any given point you can retrieve that it retrieve the data frame for so that's the beauty of it like suppose if you are writing another logic so you can retrieve this data frame for so there is a complete uh, what you say the lineage or the dag that means the dag is what it's a direct as a direct tick a direct acyclic graph so that means uh, so it is it's a graph theory concept like a dag is a graph theory concept and direct acyclic means it is doesn't have any cycles right so and it is having a direct relationship between like one after the other right? so that's the uh, that's how it uh, actually uh, logically it derives this kind of a relationship between each of the data frames that it is getting created inside so and we will see how this is a logical plan actually so the spark uh, engine itself uh, will create this logical plan uh, when it is executing so that it doesn't lose because uh, you might think how it can lose a track right but uh, so there will be a complex operation which will be taking uh, which is having a lot of data which is having a lot of joins say for example this particular is having a lot of joins the first step right so where you are having a lot of joins and the, the data volume is huge right so there and the data is distributed so there can anything can go wrong in between right you can imagine so the the first step or the second step is completed and from second to third step it is executing a lot of joins a lot of uh, conditions and uh, a lot of data is you have to load it from different distributed systems so during that time anything can go wrong so instead of retrieving all the steps back right so uh, if you don't keep track of this second uh, data frame right again you have to rerun the, from the first step so in this case what happens is if something goes wrong here when the cluster is uh, having an issue or something so it can uh, resume from the second step so that's the logical uh, uh, convenience that uh, spark has when because of that it is having this DAG concept so now uh, let us quickly jump uh, for the practical uh, uh, approach of seeing this how exactly this looks like uh, right the concept that we discussed uh, that is uh, it is uh, is immutable the data frame is immutable and also how the DAG visualization comes in so this concept we will see exactly in the spark uh, uh, environment uh, using databricks right and uh, if you don't know how to set up this so in the uh, please refer to the previous videos introductory videos and uh, so the entire setup can be sent to your uh, email ID 
so if you can send the request to us so uh, as you can see so uh, i have data frame now right and uh, so data frame dot uh, with column and email id whatever and the with column again i'm doing here, here with column rename and here i'm taking with column and then i'm dropping a particular column called uh, uh, birth country and address id and then finally filtering birth date less than whatever it is less than 20 only th those we are picking here right so there is some operation there is a combination of uh, column renaming dropping and also some kind of a arithmetic uh, operation using some filters and all right so now when i execute this so this is uh, as you know it will uh, it is a multiple as we explained right it is a multiple step it looks like one step right but uh, command is uh, only one command but actually it is having multiple steps so where exactly you can see here it just shows the columns right so you cannot see that uh, multiple steps but however if you go and come and see here so this is a uh, what i'm doing here is uh, i'm customer df is there so i am trying to explain that customer what is customer df right so customer df is a data frame right which is which will scan okay which will scan a particular file so that is already uh, so that is how this particular customer data frame is created so it is scanning a particular uh, uh, file and we have given that uh, we have given the schema we have given the location this is a location right so it will read the file from this location and it is a csv file right and we have given the schema for it and also how the output looks like so basically it is giving a physical plan here this is a physical plan that it gives that what customer data frame is doing it is going and reading a file from this physical location with this particular predefined schema right so this is clear but what df is doing here right df is reading from this right so it is df is dependent on customer df how we will see that right so just we need to explain the df so let's explain df so here you can clearly see each and every step okay so the first step is scanning right as you can see the, the same step that uh, uh, that we are seeing for customer df the same explanation will come here and the second step you can see there is a filter the third step there is a project so in the third step exactly it is actually writing to a output so what is the input and what is the output as you can see it will completely you can see the difference if there is any columns dropped if there is any columns renamed so what was the input and what was the output so you can put them i mean pretty much compare that okay and uh, so as you can see what was the condition filter condition you can see that so we have used the same filter condition here right and uh, if there is any column rename is happening so everything will be displayed here in the in the particular steps so this is how you can see here right so first the scan is happening and on top of that there is a filter that means the lowest uh, part is scan and on top of that there is a filter so this this is what we are calling as a DAG that means after first step then only you are going to the second step so that's the concept of DAG and this is a lineage that the, the spark is maintaining so it can be any level right so now we are showing just two level here it can be like n number of levels and if there is joints uh, uh, if there is any kind of conditions right so it can uh, it can be too complicated as well right so this is simple ex example to just show that uh, concept of DAG visualization and how spark is uh, concept is immutable 